Hello. Today I'm talking about Miletus, a Julia package for pricing financial contracts. Miletus consists of two parts. The first is a contract specification language, and the second part is a library of routines for automatically price, pricing these contracts under certain model assumptions. The implementation of Miletus leverages many of Julia's powerful features, in particular things like generic programming and multiple dispatch, it's a very high performance just-in-time compiler, features like fast user-defined types, and several uh, third-party libraries such as features such as automatic differentiation. The contract specification language is based on this idea of composing contracts from smaller primitive elements, and this is based on the work of Simon Peaton Jones and Jean-Marc Ebert. For example, a simple contract is to receive 100 units. So this is a very this is a single primitive element. The opposite side of that contract consists of paying 100 units. And so likewise, this can be comp constructed by taking the receive contract and negating it with this give element. Militus also supports currency annotations. So in this case, this is the same pay contract, but we've annotated it with 100 with US dollars annotations. The, uh, these, are high, these are high performance in that they don't impose any runtime overhead on the operation of the library, but allow imparting useful semantic information into the, into the construction of the program. A single stock represents a, an unknown contract. Uh, Behavior. So this is the typically thing that we're trying to model. So in this case, this contract consists of a, a buy contract consists is composed of several elements. In this case, it consists of the high, the top level. It consists of a both contract. So this is a contract which you receive both of the containing contracts, um, and so that it contains a single stock contract as well as a contract to pay an amount. So in this case, we're buying the single stock for 100 US dollars. A zero coupon bond can be thought of as a simply a delayed receive. And so we imp implement a delay by, by use of this when clause. So a when contract can only be, ex the containing contract can, only, in this case, amount 100 US dollars, can only be exercised when the condition is true. And so in this case, when the observed date reaches the maturity date of the contract. We can express features like options via an either contract. So an either is a primitive element in which you may take either one or the other of the branches. A both, you must exercise both. Either you get to choose which one. So a European call, can be, for example, can be constructed uh, via a when statement because it can only be exercised at the maturity date. And then at the maturity date, you can exercise either the option to purchase, the branch to purchase, or simply zero, which is the null contract. It has no obligations, but you receive nothing in return. Similarly, we can an American call option, American put option, is the um, opposite in that it uh, similar in that rather than receiving being a when contract, it can be exercised anytime. So rather than we've simply replaced the when clause with an anytime clause, um, and the anytime can be exercised anytime before the date, the observed date reaches the maturity date. Um, and instead of a um, instead of a buy, we've replaced it with a sell. So we give the single stock and pay and receive um, hundred US dollars in return. Models capture the fixed or objective uh, features of a contract pricing op pricing problem. So things like strike price, maturity date, etc. A model, on the other hand, captures the varying or the subjective parameters. So things like spot price, discount rate, implied volatility. So in finance, this workhorse model is the geometric brand in motion. So this assumes that the price process, in this case, the price of the single stock, will fluctuate um, according to these sort of this Ito formula. 
In other words, it's a Brownian motion um, that acts in a multiplicative way. Uh, we construct this, so the idea is that we express the, we construct a risk neutral measure for pricing the, pricing the option, for price, The idea is that we construct a risk neutral, we specify the risk neutral measure for single stock and we can use this to then price contracts. So in this case, the geometric Brownian motion has several, uh, several arguments. The first being the start date, which is in this case we've chosen to be today. The initial price of the um, underlying single stock. We feed in the um, yield curve and the carry rate or which is in other words the yield from the, uh, think of this as the compounding, this is the uh, so compounded dividend rate, or if it's negative, it could be the cost of carry. And then finally, the, the volatility. So the value function then expresses, then allows us to price contracts under the model. So the value function takes two arguments, the first being the model under which we're, we're valuing, and the second being the contract which we wish to value. So, the value of the simplest, so a single stock is a single contract whose, as we said, its value, initial value is 100 US dollars. And so when we attempt to value that, we'll receive 100 US dollars back. A buy contract, so if we a contract to buy a single stock for 80 US dollars, therefore has a price of 20 US dollars because this is the difference between the value of the item we receive and the value of what we're paying. Similarly, we can use the incorporate the discount rate information to value what a uh, forward contract would be. So in this case, if we have a forward contract to purchase single stock for 80 US dollars, um, then at that, uh, then this is, it's, its value is then discounted. And so we receive its current val present value is uh, determined to be 22 US dollars. And so how Militus works internally is that we can automate many of these valuations by certain properties. So the value of a give contract is simply the negative of the value of its the containing contract. The value of a both contract is the value of both of the, is the sum of the value of each arm. And similarly, the value of an either contract is the maximum of the value of either arm. And so these are internally implemented using Julia's powerful multiple dispatch mechanism. In other cases, we can recognize when closed form solutions exist. Uh, in the case of a Black-Scholes model, um, we know that the, we can exploit the, Europe, the fact that the European call has a closed form solution. And so we can, uh, this will just simply call a standard Black-Scholes formula. Attempting to use inconsistent units will throw an error. So in this case, we're trying to price a, a contract specified in, G, in break British pounds. Uh, under a US, a US dollar model, and so this will throw an error. Not all contracts can be valued. Um, for example, an American put uh, under this geometric branding motion doesn't have an explicit closed form solution, so it will throw an error. Instead, we can use a more complicated model. So the simple one being, uh, in this case, being a Cox-Ross-Rubinstein binomial lattice model. So this is an approximation to the geometric Brownian motion, uh, which allows us to value both a uh, more flexible number, number of contracts. So in this case, we can value both the European core and the American put contract under this model. I should emphasize also that this is very, all that's required to compute this is three, was three lines of Julia code. We needed the original model definition, which was one line, the the contract definition, the model definition, and then finally the value, calling the value function. Compar comparatively, a complex library like Quantlib would require roughly an entire page of code to implement a similar, to implement similar functionality. Also internally, Julia is much, can be much faster simply because of many of these powerful features like just-in-time compilation and fast user-defined types. The American put price um, under the under the Cox Ross Rubinstein tree is approximately 0 point, 0 0.01 seconds. The Quantlib takes approximately three times as long.
Mulitus also supports pricing using Monte Carlo. So we simply start with our um, geometric Brownian motion. We construct a Monte Carlo sample from it. So this samples, in this case, 10,000 paths. Uh, here I've plotted the first 200 paths. This can be used to uh, compute things like Asian options. Uh, so for example, in this case, we've express, uh, expressed the floating strike Asian option, uh, which is based on the a fixed strike agent option whose price is uh, based on the average of the past month. There's many other features. We support things like least squares Monte Carlo, volatility curve fitting. Uh, so in this case, we can try and fit a Sabre model to the uh, sequence of implied volatilities. Uh, so in this case, we have a sequence of prices and various strikes. We can compute the implied volatilities for each of those uh, strikes and fit more complicated models. Uh, so in this case, we're fitting the Sabre model. Um, and here you can see the resulting the uh, price uh, implied volatilities and the Sabre model um, implied volatilities. Julia also supports uh, computation of Greeks via a feature known as automatic differentiation. This is significantly quicker and more accurate than the standard finite differencing schemes used in many libraries. So we can compute not only uh, Greeks of things which have nice closed form solutions, such as the Black-Scholes models as well, but we can also compute direct Greeks of Monte Carlo models and uh, tree models. So in this case, we computed Vegas of both from Monte Carlo models of both the European call as well as the Asian option we specified earlier. This package is now, Jumilitas is now available to try out. Go to juliacomputing.com and follow the links to JuliaFin. Thank you.